Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to be demonstrating the various methods in which we can change the scale of our 3D objects. There are a few ways in which we can manipulate the scale of an object, the easiest of which is to use the hotkey. The hotkey for scaling is the S key, so press S on your keyboard and you will begin to scale your selected object. You can lock the scale to a specific axis by using X, Y or Z after pressing the S key. So we're going to press S to scale, then we're going to press X to scale along the X axis only. We're then going to press Y and this will lock to the Y axis. And finally C which locks our object scale to the Z axis. In addition to being able to scale on an axis, we also have the ability to scale on a plane, which we can do so by pressing the S key and then holding down shift. And if we want to scale on the X plane, press the X key while holding down shift. This will allow us to scale our objects on the Y and Z axes only. Alternatively, we can hold down shift and press Y and this will allow us to scale on the X and Z axes. Finally, we have Shift and Z, which allows us to scale on the X and Y axes. So we have different ways in which we can use hotkeys to scale our objects in Blender, but we don't only have access to the hotkeys, we also have access to the scale tool in the tool shelf. The tool shelf is located to the side of the 3D viewport. We can access it by clicking this button right here. This brings up the scale gizmo, which appears as a white circle, which if we click, allows to scale in three dimensions. Alternatively, we can also scale using these three squares or three cubes that have been extruded out of these colored lines. So this red cube here allows us to scale on the X axis. The green cube allows us to scale on the Y axis and the blue cube allows us to scale on the Z axis. In addition to this, we also have access to three colored squares. The red square allows us to scale on the X plane. The green square allows us to scale on the Y plane. And finally, the blue square allows us to scale on the Z plane. So not only do we have the ability to scale using hotkeys, we can also scale using the tools of the tool shelf. However, there is another way in which we can manipulate our scaling from the tool shelf. You will notice with the scale tool that we have a little arrow in the bottom corner. If we click and hold, we bring up the scale menu, which allows us to access the scale and scale cage tools. By selecting the scale cage tool, you will notice that the gizmo has been replaced by a series of white dots. These act as anchor points. Any dots that you see in the center of a face will allow you to scale on a single axis. Any dot that you see in the center of an edge will allow you to scale on a single plane. And any of the white dots that you see on the corners or vertices, these will allow you to scale on all three axes. But the way it does so is interesting. So let's take the top of our face. We can click and drag and it's going to extrude up. The anchor point is not the dot that we select. It's the opposite dot at the bottom of our cube. So if we click the top, then the bottom becomes the anchor. If we were to click on this white dot here, then the white dot on the opposite side here would be the anchor. So click and drag, and we can scale here, in this case, on the X plane. The same applies to the corners. So if we were to click and drag from this corner here, we would use the opposite point to act as our anchor. So click and drag, 
and it scales from that anchor point. Note that this scale cage is the same shape regardless of the objects you use. So if I was to hit the X key to delete my object and let's replace it with a slightly more complicated object, say the monkey object. You can see here that the scale cage effectively acts in a similar manner to a bounding box. So it takes the max width, length and height of our model and it creates a box that surrounds it. It works in exactly the same way regardless of how the object is shaped. So we can click and drag from the top face to scale from the bottom. We can click and drag from this edge here to scale on the Y plane. Or we can click and drag on one of the corners to scale on all three axes. So this is how we can use the scale cage tool as a different way of scaling up our models. Now there is another method of scaling and that is to use the values in the side panel. If I press the N key, I will bring up the side panel in the 3D viewport. Here we have access to our location, rotation and scale transform values. You can see that the X, Y and Z values for the scale are set to one. This is the default size for any object. If you reduce the scale on any of these axes to be below one, you are shrinking the object on that axis. While if you transition to an upwards trajectory and increase the value on a specific axis, then you will increase the scale and the size on that specific axis. You can click and drag to select two or more of these transform values to scale on two or three axes as well. You can also do the exact same thing here in the properties panel. By going to object properties, which is the icon here, we can manipulate the X, Y and C scale of our model. One more thing to note is that we also have the ability to click and type in specific values. So if we take the X axis, for example, we can left click and then type in any value that we want to act as the new scale. So we can use three and then press enter and it scales up our objects by a factor of three on the X axis. These are the various ways in which you can scale your 3D models in Blender. Thanks for watching guys. If you're interested in learning more about Blender, then check out the link in the description below. This will take you to the Blender Bootcamp, which is our own library filled with Blender learning resources such as classes, full courses, further tutorials, workshops and more. Check out the link in the video description and gain access to all of these resources for free for a 30 day trial period.